queen after one of my Lobi ants. Okay, so I don't I don't have numbers. I have names. These are all my these are my ants. Pipta Zora Olga Mara Donna Milena Berta Rila. Okay, very similar in English. Pipta is Josephine. Pepe, like Pepe Le Pew, is Joey. Zora is a uh, Slavic name. Olga Mara. Mara is a derivative of Maria. Everybody knows that. Donna is a. Uh, uh, Daniela or Madonna, that's where the name comes from. Milena's old Berta's Bertha, and Rila is Aurelia, like you would have somebody called Goldie. Okay, so if you look in the old Slovenian tradition, they had these other kind of more like a top hive which they carried on their backs, and they used to just replace the front panel. And it became a tradition to change them every winter. And what they did is they painted either religious scenes or political scenes or folk scenes. So you see, like this one here, this is the devil, and they got the woman's tongue on a uh, grindstone, sharpening the woman's tongue. This one is uh, the second one up here on Donna. That's a machine where if you notice, the beekeeper, who are lonely people, they carry the old woman in, they put her in the machine, and a young woman comes out. It's A plus B over A is A is to B. And this is how all the Greek Pantheon, all the churches in Europe, they're all made the same way. So I looked, I got a 19th century drawing of how you make one of these bee houses. And I had to start with a good old American two by four, an eight foot two by four. So I had to convert all the metric to two by four. The Greeks called it the golden ratio and everybody else calls it the divine ratio. That means the name tells the story. The name shows the value. When my dad died and I met my family in Europe for the first time, uh, we didn't have any family here. You know, nobody treats you the same. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to see if, if, the, the, queen, if the hive, the queen bee, would treat me like one of my ants did. So I'm doing a study to see if the Donna hive or the Olga hive or the Zora queen mm -hmm. If they have the same temperament as my aunts. If they do, I'm gonna to write to the New England Journal of Medicine. I'm gonna think this is pseudoscience. <laughs> so, uh, so far, the Milena hive here has been the most, um, that was my aunt, she was widowed early, and she ended up having really kind of a wi uh, wild life. That thing is producing like you can't believe. So, so far it's holding true. That thing is producing bees, so cool. come on in. Okay, so what we did, uh, by the way, I'm the charm in the family, my wife's the brains. And uh, so what she did is, she again put all my aunt's names on here. Just so you see what this looks like, these are, these are triple hives. The one out there is, is, is two. Now, nothing's gonna come out at you here. Okay, but this is the way they look. Okay, so what happens here is, You've actually got something, I got ants, good. You can pull this out and that's a, uh, you know, for uh, Varroa control or whatever. And then these are feeders, so I fill them up with honey water and if you look behind you, I use little Snapple jars. So you lift, the, lift that up if you would. That's how I feed. Get out of the way. <laughs> this is how I feed these things. Oh, okay. okay, so I literally get these things and put them in here. Okay, this is all to lock it in. Here's your brood chamber. By the way, these are, there's 10 frames per chamber. Okay, there's a queen excluder in here. Then these are, these are, um, these are your, your honey chambers. And they all look the same way. Okay, so I've got this on here for a special reason so the bees don't drown. And then these are, these are basically vents. When you transport them in Europe, because a lot of the farms are small, they put these things on trailers and take them to the local farmers. The whole house. Yeah, well actually, I'm gonna build one that's gonna have eight trailers on it. They've got some with 30, and they, they rent them out to the farmers. I tried lifting a super a, a medium with six year before last, moved it over and dropped it. Every, you know, bees everywhere. Ooh, yeah. Okay, by the way, I did it 
without one of these on. Oh, oh it hurts. I want you to know you're dealing with Einstein. Okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> right then and there, I decided it's over with. And so what happened was, I can't do beekeeping. So then what happened was, I, um, uh, I had to go for a family reunion. I went to Europe, and they said, well, why don't you do it our way? You're supposed to do it our way anyway. This is tradition. You know, you get that noise? So uh, I looked at this, and I figured, this is the heaviest thing I have to lift. So when, excuse me, just, I'm right behind you. Okay. I just want to show one thing. Yeah. If I, in here, now this is, basically this is a length of but you literally pull this out, and I'll show you on the one there. This is the heaviest thing you lift. No. Okay? And then I've actually got a bee sweeper. You sweep them, you put them in there, and you haul them off. There's no lifting, there's no hauling, there's no, oh, there's no bees. It really works out kind of good. The other thing is, how many times you've gone out since it's too windy? Yeah. Oh my God, I gotta stay in the heat for that sun beating on that. I gotta, <laughs> um, how many times you go where it's raining? You know, you're planning all week, and then it's raining on Saturday. I don't have that problem. So when we built this, we figured, I'm gonna build a bee house. Worst thing that can happen is, I'm gonna have a real nice tool shed. <laughs> so that's where I am. And then uh, we left everything open because um, I didn't want any bugs or anything getting in the walls or someone and smelling, okay? And then when I went to Europe, these, excuse me here, these are the real traditional hives. You see these, see, see this is the way you, they used to carry them from field to field. And they put three on their backs. And then here, these front panels, this is the hive. And these are the, the front panels are the only thing they would change. And that's how that tradition started of changing, mm -hmm. uh, and it becomes folk art. Mm -hmm. Tourists are buying these up like they're going out of style over there. Here's the ratio. A plus, A, 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 B is to A plus B is A is to B. For you artistic types and us romantic types, you see this is, this is how we define beauty in the Western. This is the Mona Lisa and that's the Fibonacci sequence. That's how this thing is made. That's why it's so appealing to the eye, okay? And he does it saying here with the Petruvian man. By the way, my God, my grandson says that's the Peruvian guy. The Peruvian guy. So what it is is basically everything is on, this is A, this is A plus B, that's A plus B. So the corners are 8 foot, then it's 12.94 feet and 12.94 feet. What's interesting about this is the design of the house, supposedly they don't know exactly why, but you get less water content in the honey. Very common to have 13 or 14 percent water and in Europe you're not allowed to have anything over 18 percent the honey can't have over 18 percent right. the design of the house with that rounded front roof keeps and the design of the hive keeps the humidity out so they keep it drier because they're fanning it so the cold air goes down the hot air goes up it's really kind of an ingen ingenious design um, the Slovenians have their own bee and they say to protect it. Uh, they call it a carniolan and they say that they keep it inside the border. By the way, Slovenia is right under Austria, Italy, Hungary, and Croatia. And they don't let the bees out. They don't issue them passports, so they can't get out. They tell, how, do they, how can they possibly tell you they can't get out? So anyway, so now you know that they, the people in the beekeeping community are kind of full of baloney. So, this is, uh, I keep a freezer here, um, just for, because I'm, I'm trying to do that uh, nectar management. Okay, this is an interesting thing. Uh, you guys, everybody uses a smoker, right? Well, when you got your smoker, and you gotta put your paper in, it, in there, you can only use the Slovenian American Times. No other paperwork is a crumbling mirror. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, you have to one, do the ones in Slovenian. This is something I thought was ingenious. How many times do you go in and you only deal with, you only want to look at one hive? These are little, what they call, well, I don't know what it's pressed wood or pressed paper, but these things, you just light them and they burn for about 20 minutes. And you use this instead of completely doing a smoker. It's the most time-saving thing I've ever seen. So what I do is once I get the smoke going, just like that, this will burn for 20 minutes. What I can do 
is just literally set it in here, close the door, and I can I'm I don't have to open the hive, don't have to expose the bees. And by the way, if I haven't told, I'm a chicken. I don't like getting stung. So you know, this has really been kind of. Where do you get those? If you don't mind. Pardon? I'm sorry. Where do you get those uh, little things? Well, I bought these. Uh, the the I bought like a case of them from Europe. Ah, okay. They're nothing but press board. I can't seem to find them here. Huh. And by the this stuff is um, you've probably found out. Remember when I told you this is real easy to do? <laughs> not, not when there's a bunch of people looking at you. Okay? Um, what's good about this is it's contained. I never have to, I never weather strip. I'm facing south, southeast. I never have to worry about putting them behind bushes. If you notice the way we've set it here, I've even got um, flowers in the front because as the bees come out, they fly up and I put shades on everything so I can completely make this place dark, leave that little window open. When I close it, even if this place is full of bees because I'm changing or, you know, uh, splitting, I come back in 20 minutes, they're gone. Because they all, they, bees fly up to the light. Oh, so if you can keep this thing dark, yeah. you've, um, you've got it made.